All right, guys, what we're gonna talk about in this video, the economic collapse of 2023, how it's gonna happen, how it's gonna shape up. We're gonna get into that and a whole bunch more. We've had a pandemic for two years, about to enter its third year of activity. We have a war, Russia invading Ukraine. We have cataclysmic inflation. We have gas prices that have crossed the 50% increase in a year. We have all of these elements that are gonna set the stage for what I feel is going to be a very painful and economically long hardship for some people. Let me say that again, for some people. Uh, the people with money, they're just sitting there like, bring it on, bring it on, man. Bring it on, baby, so I can buy these assets on fire sale. So the people who are prepared and positioned are gonna be fine. But for the average person, it's gonna be an economic hell. And I'm getting ready to explain why after I get over a few housekeeping duties. All right, so we're getting ready to launch the home economics course, first training this Sunday, 4 p.m. Today is Tuesday. So I'm giving you plenty of lead time. Also, let's kind of go over this because uh, I feel that this has been helpful. As you know, I have more than one YouTube channel. There's the Institute of Economic Thought, the flagship channel. There's the House of Pain. I love that name. Uh, this is what's going on at the House of Pain. I have 4,000 videos on this channel and that's just too much for someone to watch so what i'm doing is curating what i feel are the best videos and i'm moving them to the house of pain so you can watch them on a more easy prorated face and there is disruptive mail disruptive mail is about to get active i'm getting ready to do some stuff with the masculine frame disruptive mail uh, i wrote, uploaded the video today talking about how to be a boyfriend it's a very different video and then we have the corporate game which is to me it's going to be the advanced level channel that's going to be the where the advanced level game is and then uh, at some point i am bringing back savage finance maybe this month maybe the beginning of next month i gotta set that up so that is the channel lineup if you want to keep up with what the oh yeah this is glendon cameron i was supposed to be canceled but I'm running a YouTube network. Look at that, look at that boy, look at that boy. Running a YouTube network, and he was supposed to be canceled by a bunch of common folk. Hmm, very interesting, really interesting. So that's the channel lineup, and that's what's going on. This is the broader economy, the Institute of Economic Thought, and the House of Pain is business education. The corporate game is corporate business education. Disruptive Mail is masculine information and Savage Finance 2 will be a personal finance channel. So I will get all that stuff going on and let you know. All right, so let's talk about this economic collapse that is coming. There's been a lot of people who have been jumping on the recession bandwagon. And I have put out before, months ago, that I felt that the recession was gonna start in 2023. And there are signs, number one, this war and inflation that may bring us there in 2022, but I don't feel that we're really gonna see it or still are feeling it into 2023. Because the, it, it takes time for these things to work their way through the economy. So the number one factor that I feel that's gonna bring us into a recession is inflation. Because this is the, the playbook. The Fed is gonna start jacking up interest rates to starve off inflation. Now what is this is gonna do? We have a white hot housing market right now. And the housing market is gonna play a big, big role in the recession. 
Um, there are people who are putting up videos. There will not be a housing crash uh, in 2022. And that may or may not be the case, but I feel at some point, and I'm about to outline the reasons why there's going to be a housing crash. As I recently exposed in one video that I tried to flip a house, we actually flipped the house, but we didn't make a lot of money, spent a lot of money. And I'm starting to see that whenever I put up information that goes contrary to the YouTube feel good nation, we YouTube, we gonna feel good, we gonna put all this information. I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to help you. When someone comes on YouTube and tells the truth, I start to see a lot of comments like, yeah, man, I try house flipping, I try house flipping, I try house flipping, you don't know what you're getting into. So housing is gonna play a big role. And once again, let me give you the playbook. As the Fed raises the interest rate, the number of people who can afford mortgages is just going to disappear. Uh, it's gonna drop because here we are in the year of our Lord, March 8th, 2022. The average couple that makes $75,000 to $100,000 a year are struggling to buy a house. This is happening right now. These people have been priced out of the market. 75 to 100K a year cannot find a house or what they can find on the market is a piece of crap. There's waiving home inspections. Never, never, never waive a home inspection. Never waive a home inspection. How do I know? We bought this house without a home inspection. Then we found out we had foundational issues that cost $35,000. We found out there was a termite problem. It was like thing, bad thing after bad thing after bad thing after bad thing that added like a extra $125,000 to the cost of this supposedly we can do this flip easy. So never, never, ever get a house without a home inspection. Don't do it. Don't waive it. If they're like, Hey, you know, we need to see an offer before you can even see the house. Just walk, just walk. But right now people who make 75 to hundred thousand dollars a year are struggling hard to buy a house. So let's go ahead and say these people are on the precipice of getting a house then boom, they raise the interest rates. They're no longer qualified to buy a house. That is problematic. 75 to 100K a year cannot qualify for a house. What about most of America, which is below that? They can't buy a house. So we're at a entry point where the market is overpriced, where most people cannot afford a house. That is not sustainable. That's once we start with these interest rates and knocking out the people who can currently afford a house, knocking them out the park, it's gonna get worse. Then what's happening with houses? At no point in history have this many investors bought single family homes. So what this is doing is created a saturation point in investors who are buying a house. Like, you know, uh, here's a little departure. I'm selling these cars and people asking me all these questions, right? Like, you know, you're driving it and you know, uh, I'm just starting to tell them the truth. It's like, this was part of a rental car business. I never drove this car. I don't really know the history because I don't, because they're asking me all this question. Like it was my personal vehicle and I drove it every day and I wiped off the hubcaps with a handkerchief. I'm like, no. And like one person who actually ended up buying a car, I said, I drive that. He said, you drive that Porsche? I was like, yeah, that's that's my weekend car. And I have a BMW X5, which is more of my daily driver. That's what I drive. None of these cars I would ever drive because they're not my type of cars. He's like, oh, okay. So I'm like, I'm just be straight up with you. I, I don't know. I'm just, this is one of the reasons this car is so cheap. So these investors are buying these houses that they have no intention of living in. So when they go to sell them, and they're getting all these questions, they can't ask these questions because they never lived in the house. They never lived in the house. And just like I never drove these cars, like uh, one of the things that I'm thinking about doing is just dumping them all on Carvana because um, I, once again, I got to crunch some numbers and see 
how that's going to work for me dumping the cars on Carvana and then taking the loss on my taxes. I got to look at that. But so we have this glut of investors and we have some seasoned professionals investing and we have a bunch of rookies. Can you say Zillow bought all these houses at prices that they could not afford to sell them? Zillow had to lay off literally half of its staff because of this big fupa. So we have the investors who are buying these houses. And th this is one of the things that happens. When you have an investor, like I invested in the car rental business and I invested in this house, when things go back, you just want that, you just want it gone. You don't want to look at, you just, fire sale, fire sale, fire sale. And then here is the thing that the people who say there was not be a housing crash that they don't understand. Currently, across the United States, home builders have pulled permits for 1.5 million new construction homes. These are homes that they've pulled the permits that are not on the market. So this creates the perfect storm, rising interest rates, investor dis disenchantment, and 1.5 million homes on the market that weren't there before. Just like, boom, these homes just wanna start coming on the market. And once they, this perfect storm of rising interest rates, investors dumping properties, and then there's this oversupply of new homes that weren't on the market before. They, they pull the permits. These houses haven't been built yet. So, all of this stuff is going to take some time to work its way through the system. And what we're looking at, fourth quarter. Everything points to the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter for a lot of these new homes to start coming on the market. Fourth quarter for the interest rates hikes to take effect. Fourth quarter for the investors to get disenfranchised and to pull out the market and start selling these houses. And then, boom! You have the perfect storm. Oh! inflation is going to keep going up inflation is not disappearing um inflation isn't going anywhere inflation is going to keep um going up and i'm going to tell you why inflation is going to keep coming up let's go back two years to the CARES Act. This recession that we're gonna have in 2023 was not created by natural marketplace forces. Remember, I was talking about that the government shouldn't have interfered and should have let things fall where they would fall. The stimulus of creating, of giving people $600 a week $2,400 a month. For some people, this was the most money they ever made. So this government stimulus induced recession is gonna be a mother. It's gonna be a mother. Because like I had a lot of people, it's like, and they had to do some, they had to do some for the people. If the government hadn't created the CARES Act and flooded the economy with all the stimulus money and then jacked up the national debt by eight trillion, we would not be on the precipice of having this staggering recession that's about to hit. This was a policy induced recession. Didn't come from natural market forces. Uh, when Trump was in office, the economy wasn't super strong because I talked about that but the economy was more stable than it is now. And we have a fragile economy. We have inflation. We're, we're on the verge. Like I said, you're going to see as these new homes come on the market, 1.5 million new homes. Now there's something else that's going on that. There is this book. I don't know if it's called upside or upshift. It's on Amazon and it talks about demographics. 
we have another little problem. Our population growth has stalled. So we're gonna go from a situation where we don't have enough houses because the primary inventory that is selling is resale houses. Because during the pandemic and the supply chain issues, a lot of builders stopped building houses. So there's a two year pent up demand for houses. But here, here, here's the thing, here's the thing. From a population standpoint, when those 1.5 million houses hit the market, we will have houses for people we don't have. This is why I am like willing to bet anyone $10,000 that we're gonna have a recession in 2023. We're going to have houses that we don't have people who will be living in these houses. If you keep up with China, China has huge cities of apartment buildings and stuff that no one lives in because of their policy to keep people working. We're going to have a China like effect. We're going to have houses because one of the things that they're doing in the rental house market is, is going to be glutted. We have corporations that are building brand new housing developments, and these are gonna be rental communities. Let's take a little departure there. What do we see going on in trailer parks? What do we see going on in trailer parks? We see high drug use, we see high crime rates, we see a lot of fuckery in trailer parks. I guarantee you with these newly built rental communities, we're going to see similar things. You want to know why? I was watching a video and it was actually a commercial. It was an advertisement and he was talking about something that I have noticed to be true is when people rent with a sense of ownership, they treat their house better. And he was talking about leasing the houses out to own versus just renting them to rent them. Because typically with these rate rental rate increases, people are like moving because they're like, I don't want to pay that money. So he said something that I know to be true. He said when he did these lease options and he rented out these house, he, he leased these houses. When he got the houses back, they were in better condition than when he leased them to these people because these folks had a sense of ownership. So you have this whole brand new subdivision with nothing but renters. I guarantee you, you're gonna have trash on the ground because it's, it's, it's just a rental. It's just a rental, it ain't mine. They're gonna abuse these houses. I have a few friends who have rental properties and I have like lived through the, the horror tales of a bad renter. Uh, this one of these girls, yeah, I was fucking her. I know that triggers a lot of you that I got so much pussy. Um, she had to evict this person and what they did in every room and every wall, they punched holes in every wall. They took the stove and the refrigerator, washer and dryer, out the house, probably sold them. And then this is disgusting. They messed up all the toilets. It took her $40,000 to get that house back in rental shape. And when she was telling me that she was crying, she was crying. And I didn't understand her pain until I got in the car rental business. I did not understand her pain. You know, at the point, you know, I, I gave her a hug and I was like, hey, it's gonna be okay. You're tough, you can deal with this. You got money, you'll get the house fixed and you'll rent it to someone who will treat your property better. When these rental communities, these houses are gonna be trashed. And this is one of the things that no one is even talking about. And I can say it, when you rent to people who cannot afford to buy what they're renting, damage rates goes through the roof. Damage rates go through the roof. 
So we're on, we're, this is March and we got nine and a half more months before the economic bombs start going off. They're gonna start going off. First economic ball, first economic bomb, rising interest rates, knocking people off the qualification shelf. It's like, oh, at this interest rate, we can get this house and our credit score and blah, 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 we can get in. Doop, knock them off. Doop, knock them off. Remember, we are at a point where people who make 100K a year cannot afford a house in the current market. They're struggling. All they can buy is dilap dilapidated crap. I want you to think, you and your wife, Susie, your name is Andy, you got your two little precious kids, and you're getting ready to buy your first house. And all you can buy is a piece of crap? Because that's all you can afford in this current marketplace? This is another economic bomb that's going to come. Buyer's remorse. A lot of people are going to buy houses that they wish they haven't bought. This is going to be a huge problem because everyone's trying to get a piece of the American dream. Everyone's trying to get a house. And right now I am seeing a multitude of YouTube channels that's like, hey, don't buy a house in 2022. Because everyone with a common sense sees what is getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. It's just a matter of time. Just, just a matter of time. And I got a lot of people, you can't predict the recession. They happen like, no, 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 no. You can predict them if you have enough economic data. And now we have the war with Ukraine and the dramatic price of energy. Okay, here's something that no one talks about when gas prices go up. Gas prices going up affect everything. The price of eggs, the price of cheese, the price of milk, the price of TVs, the price of furniture, the price, because everything has to be transported somewhere. Everything has to be shipped and there is a cost to shipping. So that's going to be a big, big fare. And what happens when gas goes up that dramatically and that quick? First, we have gas. Your, your gas prices went up. Rent went up. Food prices went up. But your salary didn't go up. So right now we have so many people who are economically squeezed that food banks have their lines have quadrupled to the people going to the food banks. I was watching this video talking about free cycle and never buy communities. And what there are are communities on Facebook where people just give stuff away for free. And usually it's kind of crappy. Uh, this one guy, he literally furnished his whole new apartment off of this website. And it's stuff that like, when I give them stuff, when I give away stuff for free. I give away real nice stuff and people be losing their mind. I get messages like, are you seriously giving away these GoPro cameras? They're gone, bro. You mess around asking stupid questions. They're gone. I gave away the GoPro uh, cameras. I gave away an Apple watch. I gave away some art. I gave away some lights. I literally had people losing their minds over the stuff I was giving away because I was giving away once again, stuff that I wanted out of my life and it wasn't worth the effort to sell this stuff on eBay or Craigslist or Facebook market. It just wasn't worth the effort for me, for me. And this is something I have seen in this building. In this building, we have an area that you can take your cardboard boxes. Uh, we have trash chutes. You, your bag of trash, just putting in a chute and it, you hear it dum, 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 tumbling now, right? We have an area where we have to take the cardboard boxes. I have seen flat screen televisions. I have seen complete bedroom sets. I've seen 12, 15 mattresses, mattresses and box springs that if I was still in the resale business, all of that stuff that I saw in the waiting in the holding area, because at the moment it's been cleaned out, I could have sold and I just kept a running tally. 
All of the stuff that I've seen in that area, if I was to sell it, I could have made twelve, fifteen thousand dollars. Why? Because the people in this building have the same problem that I have. They need stuff gone. They need it out of their life. And they don't want to mess around with trying to selling it. So they just literally throw it away. Throw it away. Because it's just not worth the hassle of trying to sell. So once again, rich folk problem, rich folks issues. But here's the thing. I am almost certain that this recession is baked in. Now, what does that mean? Baked in means that we have gone past the point of no return. The inflation is going to continue. This thing with housing, housing is a ticking time bomb. And honestly, I am glad that we're done with that project and we sold that puppy and got rid of it because I am not ever going to try to flip a house again. Mm -mm. You know, we went through the process. I learned a lot and I've learned I don't want to be part of that business. And one of the things that I have learned, because I have 25 years of experience, I'd rather be a business owner than an investor. Once again, the car rental business, this house flip left bad, 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 bad taste in my mouth, bad taste in my mouth. I don't want no parts of those businesses. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that anymore. This is why I am building the YouTube network. I am building, I'm th thinking about doing a podcast. I'm thinking about doing a lot of different stuff that is media driven because, you know, a little departure from the main commentary. The most money I have made has been from communication, writing books, creating YouTube channels. This is the most money I have made in my life has come from communication. And I was in bed and I was thinking, dang, dude, this is what you need to pour your time, energy and effort into. And like I'm starting in stage one because, you know, uh, I took a little break and I feel you know, with me talking, we're going to have a recession 2023 and people will ask me, Lyndon, if we have a recession, are you worried about your business? And the answer is no, I'm not because I have been through about four recessions, four or five. I have to check. And I have made money in all of these recessions because I know how to properly position myself. So I'm not worried for me from a tactical standpoint in business because this is once again, you have the Institute of Economic Thought. This channel made $10,000 last month. And then um, the House of Pain, House of Pain made 3,500 and the other channels brought me up to 15,000. So as I pour into this and I make it better and put out better content in three years, I got a three year plan, three years. I can be doing 250 a year just from YouTube, YouTube AdSense money, not including online courses, not including the consulting. So I am not worried. I am not worried at all because here's something that you don't understand if you're talking about that worried stuff. In 1929, when we had the Great Depression, we had people building mansions. Duesenberg, which is, Google it, it's a car. It was a beautiful, fancy car. They were building Duesenbergs. So regardless of how, and that was the worst economic period that we ever had in the United States. And Wells Fargo became a larger bank during the Great Depression. A lot of people got rich during the Great Depression, because like I said, uh, there are rich people who are just sitting around like, come on already, come on, come to mama, come to daddy, come on, bring this recession on, because we got pockets full of cash and we are ready to buy assets like crack. So. Here's one of the things that you may find to be interesting. When you look at 
income growth per social economic status, there has been no income growth for the bottom 75%. Bottom 75%, there's been virtually no income growth. But the top 10% income growth went from 4% to 10%. Now, what does that tell you? The poor get poorer and the rich get richer. And I'm going to tell you why. When you have access to a re resource rich environment, it is much easier to get rich than when you're starting from scratch with no resources, no help, no assets, no friends. There was a guy, I cannot remember his name, but he went to his neighbor, knocked on the door. Hey, I have this business ideal and I want you to invest a million dollars into it. And the guy said, I like it, let's do it. How many of you have a neighbor where you can go and ask for a million dollars and they have it? Not too many Americans have those kind of neighbors. This kid grew up in a resource rich environment and he started a company, I cannot remember his name, but the company, he sold it for $500 million after 10 years. So he and his neighbor made a lot of money off that company. And what you're going to see, and once again, put this in here. You know one of the biggest factors of you being wealthy later in life is if your parents had money. They did a study, kept up with all of these very high in, in, in IQ kids, 140, 150 IQs, and they looked at the kids who grew up in the ghetto with 140, 150, and those kids are often abused because they're smart and their parents will use them or uh, they will, I forget the word, the word is not, they will abuse them, they will take advantage of these children because they're smart. And then you can have George W. Bush, the second president, the second Bush president, who wasn't that really that smart, but they owned a baseball team. So this here's a guy who wasn't that smart, who was a C student, who became the president of the United States because he grew up in a resource rich environment. So once again, if you don't believe me, Google it. Look at the indicators of you will be wealthy and one of the biggest, most significant indicators of you will be wealthy later in life if your parents had money, regardless of your intellect. And this is gonna be a big, big issue in the future. Who's going to clean up during this recession? The people who currently have money, not the people who are trying to get money, not the people who are trying to build some stuff. Mm -mm. So what we're going to see, this recession is going to create a social economic ocean. You always talk about the wealth gap. It's going to go from a gap to an ocean. This recession is going to economically separate Americans like nothing has ever had before. You're gonna have people who are gonna be talking about buying their second or third plane, talking to people who are trying to buy their first or second or first new car. The social economic ladder is gonna be all kinds of twisted. And this is one of the reasons I moved because with this recession, crime is going to be epidemic. It's going to be stupid. And who are the criminals going to prey on? People like me. That's who they're coming for. Because we have the money. I am not stupid. I don't live in a bubble. I know very well what's going on out there. I know people are starving. I know people are hurting. I know people are living in their cars. I know right now 
there's a chick who's going to fuck a dude that disgusts her tonight because she needs a place to stay. She going to open up her legs and she's going to take that little shriveled up dick because she needs a place to stay. There's a dude with a six pack who's going to be fucking a fat chick tonight and he going to close his eyes and pretend that she's an Instagram baddie while he hits that up because he needs a place to stay. You don't understand. Y'all don't hear me. It's hard out there. You got people doing something strange for a little change. Prostitution is going to explode. Crime is going to, petty crime is going to explode. And also because of the very high stress levels across the board, domestic violence is about to go nuts. Murder, 30, 40% increase in the last two years. It's going to continue on. This is why my activities when I'm on the highway and someone like cuts me off, you know what I do? Hit that brake and I get away from them. Because we're dealing with crazy, mentally unstable people. You don't know what you're going to run into out there. You have no clue to what you're going to run into out there. The stress level. Right now, there's going to be a mama who's going to turn some tricks to feed her babies tomorrow. This is going on right now. This is the economic reality of a lot of people right now. And it's going to get worse. I live, I don't live in the bubble. Yes, I live a privileged life. I understand that in many regards, I was fortunate because I was looking back because after doing all of this research for the Institute of Economic Thought and just looking at how people get money and I had an upper middle class upbringing and I didn't even know it. I was unaware of how blessed and fortunate I was to grow up in a house that believed in reading. Reading was something that was pushed in my household. My grandmother read, my mother read. We read the Sunday papers, we read books. We were voracious readers. That is a wealth building activity. Accumulate knowledge. So once again, I am not oblivious to the current level of economic pain, which is going to get worse in 2023. Uh, during my controversy, uh, someone said something about human trafficking. And I was just like, if you understand BDSM and you understand the rules of consent, you don't do anything to a girl unless she's with it. I've never raped anyone and I have never trafficked. I'm, that's just, the, ne, it never even came to me to, you know, human trafficking. If you didn't know what human trafficking is, literally they like, Girl be walking down the street, van pulls up, tell you a funny story in a minute. Van pulls up, door slides open, and they just yank her off the street. And then they dope her up and they have her working in the brothel. That's a very real thing. I ain't do nothing like that. Years ago, Craigslist protocol, I was dating this girl, I was in the storage auction business. And I, I had no shame in my game. I would pick up a girl in the box truck. I would pick up a girl in the van. And I went to get her. And then she came outside and she said, we going in that? And I was like, what are you talking about? She said, that van, that's the predator van. Every time a child's missing, that's the van that you see. And I started laughing. Because I had I was completely unaware that I was driving the predator van. But she got in and then we, we got down. But one of the things that you have to understand and this is why so many people found it so hard to believe that 75 percent of the people in this country are making thirty-five thousand dollars a year or less they found that because they live in an income bubble all their friends do well and they live in a nice neighborhood and 
I'm a, people, I, honestly, I got two vehicles and last year I put 6,000 miles on, on the Porsche. Now, in almost two years, I put 6,000 miles on the Porsche and I put 12,000. So that's averaging about 9,000 miles per year per vehicle. I don't drive that much. You wanna know why? Because everything that I can need or want is like here. I don't really have to leave my neighborhood to get what I want unless, you know, uh, there's some hot dogs up in Marietta. Bessie's hot dogs. I will leave and go get them on occasion. I haven't done that in a minute but I typically don't have to leave my nest. And essentially, if I was economically obtuse, I would think everyone's living well. Like in this building, there's like 10 Rolls Royces between the Cullinan and the cars. There's like 12 Bentleys. There's a bunch of Lambos. There's now, there's only like three Porsches and I have one of the Porsches and there's a ton of BMWs. So if I was to look at my environment and think that was a reflection of the world at large, I would be wrong. I would be really, really wrong. And this is what people who live like, I'm gonna tell y'all, get on the elevator the other day and my neighbor's on the elevator and her back's turned and she's got on like this long thing that literally goes to her ankles. Then she turns around and it's like <laughs> bikini time. And baby girl got a body, a banging body. And I was like, like I own the elevator, there ain't no telling what I will see. There are chicks around here who've had surgery and are damn proud of it. They've had the BBL, you could tell. I, I know what the, I, when I can see a chick, I can tell if she had the BBL. There's a certain look that she will have. She'll be too perfect. She'll be too perfect. Hips jutting out at a 90 degree angle, BBL. Cause what, you know, if you don't know what the BBL is, they suck all the fat out your tummy and put it in your ass and hips. And then you've got to sleep on your stomach for two or three months because you can't sleep on your ass while it all heals up and the drainage comes out. This is what I've learned living in this building. Cause uh, I was on the elevator one day and I run to a girl and she and her girlfriend are talking about it. And I was like, you had what? And she said the BBL and she had it too. And hers turned out really good. And she's like, turn around, turn around. And she turned around and all of a sudden this girl puts her hands on her knees and starts twerking and making it clap. Like, I was like, you got some talent there, sweetie. She's like, thank you. You know, if I wasn't making so much money on Instagram, I might strip, but you know, I don't have to leave my house to make money. Okay, all right, all right. Must be nice. So one of the things that we're going to see during this economic recession this this big recession this recession based upon the numbers is looking to be bigger than the great recession of 2008 because i hit y'all over the head with people are not paying their rent last time that that many folks didn't pay their rent was 2006. it is looking like 2008 for the real estate market it's looking like 2008 for people not paying their rent and this gas, this, every time, and there is a chart, if you wanna go ahead and look at it, every time that we've had gas go up 40 to 50%, right after we've had a recession. Every time that has happened, we have had a recession. Every time. Now, the yield curve inverted in 2019. Then what happened? Next year we had the pandemic. Pandemic induced recession. So it's kind of funny how these signals will happen and then we will have bad economic news right after. Every time, inverted yield curve, recession. Rising gas prices, recession. 
And once again, late rent payments, like that's, that's huge because we live on a very leveraged economy. And unlike 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, we don't have all of these toxic mortgages. People have been better qualified to buy a piece of real estate, had better credit scores, and often had money to put down. So we don't have that issue for real estate. But the issue that we have is an oversaturation of investors in the real estate market. There's just too many investors in the real estate market buying rental properties. And at some point, that market is going to collapse. It's going to fall apart. It has to. Because once again, if you remember my speech talking about template businesses, the biggest problem with a template business at some point is going to become saturated. And it's going to be like the uh, today, I don't know what's going on with higher car, but I looked today and I saw four pages. When I joined higher car, they used to be like 20 pages. I cannot honestly say if they're renting the cars or that many people have left the platform. Now, what I can say with my experience with higher car with like right now, I'm still feeling it. These people abused and dogged out the cars. I had a guy who tried me and uh, he came and looked at the diesel and he was like, you know, he looked at it. He didn't put a scanner. You know, it's like I didn't pull codes and stuff. The car needs work. And he offered me six thousand dollars. These cars are selling for twelve and thirteen thousand dollars. You want to know why? They're very rare. And I know this. And I didn't even, because one of the things, I don't even go back and forth with them because when someone will hit me with a lowball offer like that, because I didn't understand that, you know, he's like, he came and looked at the car, he did not make an offer, he left. I thought, honestly, I thought I would never hear from him again. And then I got someone else today who asked me, would I take 12 for it? So this guy offered 6,000 because one of the problems that I'm having, because my, my thoughts was it would take me three months to sell these cars. It's gonna take longer than that. It may literally take the rest of the year to sell all these cars. Because if I can sell four, I've sold one this month. If I can sell three or four more, I would consider that a win. I would consider that a win. So we will see, because I, I gotta sit down. Like today has been an online course YouTube day. I've made multiple videos and things like that. And once again, I'm starting to get my rhythm again because Sunday we have live training with the House of Economics, Home Economics. But man, I, I, I have a friend, well, someone I know who put up the video said there will not be a housing crash in 2022. And I have said that, and I actually think all this stuff is really beginning to start rolling in 2023. Everything to that I have researched and found points to 2023. It will start fourth quarter of 2023. And it, the technical definition of recession is two consecutive quarters. So I am pretty sure the recession is going to happen in 2023. It may start. We may have a negative growth in December, which would be interesting because it'd be the holidays. It'd be Christmas. It'd be Christmas spending going back to what happened this year when marketplace forces entered worst Black Friday sales ever. And once again, if you go back and do the research, economic spending for the holidays was growing 20, 30 billion a year. 2030, you know, this year it only went up 11%, which is a sign that people didn't have money. And here's another thing if you didn't know personal debt is at the highest level that it has ever been. This would be credit card debt, this would be car debt, this would be student loans. That level of debt is at the highest level of debt it has ever been. So let's just go ahead and walk through the numbers. We have inflation. Inflation affecting the price of housing, whether it's a rental or the actual buy a house. We have an oversaturated 
with investors, people who have no intention of living in these houses. We have a war. We have a pandemic. We have the highest level of debt ever. Gas has crossed the historical threshold, which predicts a recession. We have homosexual revolution. We have more adult children living with their parents than except any time since the turn of the century. We have the Fed getting ready to start raising interest rates. And we have a collapsing stock market. I mean, the signals are all over the place. If you just want to look, the signals are here. And this is one of the reasons that, let me tell you what Glenn and Cameron's getting ready to do. Speaking to myself in the third person, I am not investing in nothing. I am going to be sitting on cash. I'm not investing in nothing. Once I get these cars sold and everything, I am going back to my strong point. I am not investing in anything. Uh, oh, pure, pure money, which is my channel talking about YouTube online courses. I may start that too, because once again, I got to get my chopped back because today I did, this is the fourth video that I've done today. So at one point, and I'm going to tell you something, this is called bat shooting. Um, my friend, Roberto Blake, he shoots all his videos in one day. So what I'm going to probably start doing is shooting seven, eight videos per day and do that two times a week which will give me plenty of downtime to work on online courses because I got to go ahead and um, put together my workflow. Like today, I've not left the building. Uh, like, you know, people want to look at cars. I was like, we can look at cars tomorrow. So what I do is I segment my work because like I said, three years, the YouTube business is going to be doing, YouTube channels can be doing 250, 300,000 a year. That's worth doing. That's worth doing. And then um, once again, I keep thinking of a podcast and I'm going to have a podcast. That's going to be a podcast. I'm not going to have a video podcast. I'm not going to do that. Um, Cause one of the things growing up, I'm a kid of the sixties and seventies. Radio was a big thing. Wolfman Jack, Casey Kasem. Radio was a big thing. And then I feel that if I put the, together the right podcast and name it right and aim it right, it's going to be a, it's going to be a big win. And that will be part of the social media business of the YouTube online course that will come under Mac daddy media. So it will be a, a real podcast. And once again, I'm thinking about producing it, like having the nice intro music and I have a microphone that it's going to make a great podcast microphone because it's real bassy. It's real, real bassy. So I'll get that going on and get those episodes going on and get that growing. And once again, just go all in on the communication business. That's what I'm in. I'm in the communication business. I'm also looking to do a little entertainment because once again, just for the record, the Institute of Economic Thought is the broader economy. The House of Pain is the business channel. The corporate game is the corporation channel. Disruptive mail is the mail content channel. And I've got one of Shane's money. I'm going to turn that back into Savage Finance. So I can tell you, and let me, let me just spitball here a minute. Let's say I get six bumping channels. Guess what I can do? I can run my own ads on my YouTube network. See, if you didn't know anything about running ads, and this is with the ad platform that I can add my YouTube channels to my AdSense account, not my AdSense account, AdWords account. And then I can target people who have already watched the channel. So I can literally run ads against my own content. I don't think y'all hear me. I don't think y'all heard me. This is why I'm so excited about this, that I can run my own ads on my own content. Game changer, 
game changer. And that's like a good year and a half, maybe two years away before I start doing that. Run my own ads on my content. And one of the things I'm gonna do is I get these comments. And there are so many people who don't know YouTube and don't understand YouTube. Like I could tell when you got someone else editing your videos. Uh, here's, here's a fun fact. I don't edit none of my videos. Let me say that again. I don't edit none of my videos. I don't edit none of them. Essentially what, what I have learned over the years of doing YouTube is to create a video that needs minimum editing. This is why I don't have these long, pregnant, awkward pauses. If you notice, I just keep speaking and keep speaking. That's part of the technique. I don't edit these videos. I shoot them. I run them through my uh, um, Final Cut Pro, add the music and do a little editing, editing out the part of me walking toward the camera. Sometimes I leave that in to see if y'all know this because I'd be looking in the comments like, oh, he's walking through the camera or his eye is red. I don't edit these videos. I shoot them in a manner where I don't have to edit the videos, which is part of my workflow process. Because let, let me go ahead and talk to you about editing a video. Editing a video properly and going through it can literally take 12 hours. Literally, when I used to edit my videos, the longest it would take me was six hours because what you have to do is watch, you have to cut, you have to jump shot. You, there's a lot to editing. And I just got away from that because for me to produce the amount of content that I did and I had to edit all these videos, I couldn't do it. it, it I wouldn't, I would be putting out two, maybe three videos per week top. Currently, I am putting out three, three, putting out anywhere from nine to 12 videos a week. If I was editing these videos, <laughs> the production would go way down, way down. Because this is one of the things, and this, this is why I'm probably gonna get back on pure money. People don't understand the YouTube game. Like, if you can put out the right content to the right audience, and you can speak in a cadence, in a manner, and have the gestures and keep it moving, keep it moving. You can't have dead space. You cannot have any dead space. That, that's not gonna work. Uh, if I have like a long, awkward pause, or I'll do something stupid, like answer my phone or something like that, I will edit that out. But I don't edit none of these videos. I don't edit none of them. Oh, let's talk about the music. Some people act like I'm killing them if the music's too loud and it's like, I can't watch the video because of the music. You just told me that you have very poor concentration because I have sat down and literally turned the volume of my videos way down and I can still hear exactly what I'm saying word for word. It ain't that big of a deal, but some of you be like, you're sitting on your ass watching a video and you cannot concentrate. Boy, Melvin, Melvin, you got a lot of problems. I can't help you with those problems because if you cannot sit and watch a video or if a little music distracts you, let me go ahead and tell you, you're gonna have an, an impossible time being an entrepreneur, impossible. Because in the car rental business, literally, I had all kinds of things coming at me and I had to focus and stay on point. If you cannot focus when you have a lot of things who are coming at you, you're not gonna make it as an entrepreneur. You, you just not, I'm just sitting there like, because that's why I put that thing up there. Because the music ain't that loud. It ain't, because you can hear me just fine. Also, if you have a crappy phone and you're watching the video on the crappy phone with a poor speaker, ain't my fault you broke Melvin. Ain't my fault Melvin. Once again, let's go through the lineup. The Institute of Economic Thought is the broader economy. The House of Pain is the business. Oh, this is what I'm doing at the House of Pain. Because I have 4,000 videos, I am pretty much for the rest of the year going to be adding those videos to the House of Pain so you can watch them. And as I roll them out versus, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to sit here and go through it and everything. So every few days, 
I download about 10 videos and then I'll upload them to the House of Pain and that's what's gonna be the project for this year. <clears throat> then I'll start producing original content for the House of Pain again. But literally, I can take videos off of this channel, move them to the House of Pain for the next two years. Easy if I wanted to do that. Easy, I have that much content. So that's one of the things I'm getting ready to do. And I'm getting ready to uh, set up a whole bunch of other stuff because I feel like, once again, this is why I'm not worried about a recession. Because do you understand a group of writers became rich during the Great Depression? They were called Pulp Fiction Writers. And they would sell these books for five cents a book. And these guys became millionaires at five cents per book. See, once again, once you know, and I put up a video on the corporate game, playing the corporate game. Once you start playing the corporate game and understanding corporations and understanding money, there's no way you can lose. So House of Pain is the business content. The corporate game is the business content. Disruptive Mail is the men's content. And we're getting ready to get very funky over there because I have another platform that I cannot uh, take payments on because my payment processor said, no, we don't like that. So I'm going to start putting all kinds of dirty, kinky, nasty stuff over there. And you will have to buy the uh, masculine frame to get that. So I'm going to start talking about that and all other kinds of stuff over there because YouTube ain't for play play. YouTube ain't for play play. I cannot, there's certain things I cannot put on YouTube. I learned that from the, I could have been a predator uh, the R. Kelly energy video because people lost their minds. They lost, they went nuts. So I'm getting ready to talk about some really interesting stuff. And once I get this podcast, because once again, I, I, I like to think and, con and conceptualize. And once I get that, because it's going to be funky, it's just, it's going to be very NPR-ish. It's going to be well-structured and produced. I'm not just going to like, hey, this is Glendon. I got a podcast and, and I was going to have the right intro. It's gonna be, it's gonna have elements like Savage Finance, cause I'm bringing Savage Finance back the way that Savage Finance started off. I'm bringing that back and then I'm gonna do this podcast. And um, yeah, we're getting ready to start cooking with some gas. So 2023 is when it is coming, when we're going to have the great collapse and depending upon where you are, it's gonna be very bad or it's gonna be a money grab opportunity because everything is on sale. Let me, let me just say that. People are already on sale because people get mad when I say that. Right now, there's gonna be a mom who's gonna suck a dick to get some formula money. She gonna be sucking that dick tonight. Tonight to get some formula money. This is the world we live in. I like y'all want to pretend that we live in Disneyland, like everybody's rich, that no one's poor. Like all Glennon, all those people don't make thirty-five thousand dollars a year. I be, I got friends. The minimum they make is a hundred k a piece. You know, husband, wife, that's two hundred thousand dollars a year. You guys are socially obtuse. Right now, there's going to be a young girl who's in college. And she's gonna meet with her sugar daddy tonight. And she's gonna fuck her sugar daddy tonight because she needs some money. This is real. This is real. Sexual, sexual work is going to explode. Because that's the only thing that the average chick has that she can monetize. It's that thing thing. That's the only thing she got. She don't have no talent, she has no skills, nothing. All she got is that thing thing. That's it. And she gonna work that thing that she gonna do what she need to do. She gonna, she gonna sell it. She gonna wear it out. She gonna box. She gonna package that box up and sell it all day long. Cause that's the only thing she got. Pink book lessons did a video of a girl who was in medical school and she became a stripper. She dropped out of medical school to become a stripper which kind of goes back to my black money thing and culture. This girl thought it was more appealing to become a stripper than to be an MD. 
that's a cultural issue. That's very cultural. All right, guys, that's all I got. I will see you in the next one. Once again, welcome to Mac Daddy Media. We got a lot of stuff going on and we're gonna have more. I'm kind of feeling very Tyler Perry-ish. Very Tyler Perry-ish. Got my own network here on YouTube. Once again, this is something that very few people talk about. Got my own network. Once again, I'm a one-man network. How many people could pull that off? Not very many, not very many. They haven't lived that life that I've lived. They don't understand. So I will see you guys in the next one.